All right. Take a few minutes here. Who's out there? We're doing some fun stuff today. So talk about talk about these beauties today. Uh, let's get a little better focus than that. All right, I'm just uh, posting here. Oh, what's up, everyone? I see we have uh, some people on the page now. Who's out there? Uh, leave a little comment and all that. We're going to get some fun stuff today. <clears throat> just going to finish posting this. Right. Hey, gents, Luke and Keith. Be careful what you ask for, because it'll happen. Hello, Deleuze, is that how you pronounce that? Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about lots of stuff today. Think in bio... Okay, I think we're ready. So welcome. If you guys didn't catch me last time, my name is Steve Pruitts, and uh, I'm working with WTS Drums, fantastic company. Uh, we have a lot of new products that are very exciting come out this year. Um, for me, it's, it's really great because uh, got that signature brass snare. Try and get that in a good light there. Woo. And uh, really, really exciting. And we have uh, the the new Epiphany drums, which I haven't I haven't even tried yet. So uh, I'm really excited to try those out. And uh, the option to put this tuning system on uh, drums from other manufacturers or drum makers. Uh, really, really cool. So today I thought um, I'm an improviser, you know, um, there uh, that's, that's kind of my personality as a, as a musician. Um, I mean, of course, if you have to learn parts and play a gig, that's cool. But, you know, like being a jazz musician and all those things, that's a, uh, uh that's the root of me. So I thought maybe today I would start and do like a little uh, improvisation where I'm messing around with the tuning of the drums, try to get some, uh, 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 you know, the appearance of key changes or the apparent, I mean, it's not exact, but just uh, these different tonal shifts, if you will. Okay, so 
All right. Well, we, you know what? We got, we got uh, five against seven. Uh, let's start with that. Turn on this mic here.
All right. So I just kind of went on a little improvised journey there. Um, yeah, so I'm sitting here and I'm playing uh, to, uh, playing my signature snare and all that. But brass is awesome. The snare is awesome. I, I did a whole stream yesterday. Um, I did a whole stream yesterday uh, on my signature snare. So you can go check it out for some bunch of different tunings and all that. If you have any questions, please uh, comment on the side. And, but now let's feature the artist series. This is a, a beast of a drum. Yeah. And yeah, I did some pre-recorded videos too of the, the snare and and all that and you know i got as close as i could to sounding good on a live stream oops sorry uh but obviously doing a, a recording session type of deal uh sounds sounds better so uh let's put this drum All right. There is crazy latency on this, so I gotta fix that. All right, how y'all doing out there? I think that's better. So, you can see this beauty right here. This is typically uh, a fatter sound. Just put a tiny piece of tape on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to turn off my vocal mic, so it probably sounds real distorted out there. Anyway, let me give you guys, let me tell you guys what's going on with these drums, okay? I've had these drums uh, like a about a year in my studio, okay? Um, they, they have just been fantastic, right? Uh, they originally came with coded evans uv1 heads i'm also an evans artist a dario artist so uh shout out there's my signature stick there um so uh so anyway i was as skeptical as anyone else would have been seeing these because we go into uh our normal mindset of uh you know, we just do, we just want to be a part of something that we know. Right. Um, but with these, uh, you know, luckily maybe if I, in my younger, more stubborn years, I wouldn't have been so open to it, but luckily, uh, Sam was such a nice and engaging person that he just said, Hey, why don't you come by our booth at last year's NAM?" And, uh, so I came by, I played the drums and, just blown away because it just works. It just works. It's not a gimmick. It doesn't cheapen anything. As a matter of fact, this tuning system enhances uh, enhances the tone, enhances the tuning range, enhances the feel. It really enhances a lot of things, and um, so it's uh, it's really been really been cool to be part of this process because I feel like I'm. I mean, I'm a part of something that's a new thing you know? And so really exploring these is kind of like exploring, uh, you know, uh, like new terrain, 
you know. So, um, let's see. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Sorry, I had a little sound issue there. Okay. So, all right. Welch is making a good uh, comment here. Well, I have my signature snare, so I can show you this. So, for those of you who don't know, um, the whole tensioning of these drums is operated by this mechanism here, which is basically like a bass guitar uh, tuning knob, right? And then it tightens all these, all this cable around the drum, right? And <clears throat> there are many benefits, many benefits to this. Uh, First, uh, the benefit is you have, I believe, Sam, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's 90% less hardware on the drum than a normal tension rod drum. So which means the, the shell, like the character of the shell can be shown more and it can be a uh, you know, much more robust tone because of that. Okay, so that's first. Um, Second is because you're taking, because what is tuning a drum with the tension rod really? And by the way, I should tell you that, I mean, I don't hate tension rod drums or anything. We don't hate them at Dolby TS, but uh, we're just creating our own way, just creating our own way of doing things to make, uh, uh, to make something that's cool and that will uh, appeal uh, hopefully it's a, it's a many people because one of the biggest complaints that I hear, you know, amongst my colleagues and all that is tuning drums. So, uh, so what happens is, is that the heads, um, uh, you know, you tune the drum, I'll use my example drum here. What happens is when you turn, turn this, turn this knob, both sides the, the pressure is equal on both sides, the tension. So, uh, which is awesome. Um, let's see. And then, <clears throat> yeah, I'll show, well, I did a whole drum solo play with tuning on the fly, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll show a little bit more in a, in a second there, Keith. Um, but anyways, because you're taking the guesswork out of the tension, because really that's what we're doing with tension rods. That's what they're called tension. We're trying to equally distribute tension around the head to where the tone is, you know, equal, equally distributed all around, right? We got to do that for both sides. Okay. But this takes out the guesswork, right? So the first question that people have is, well, wait a minute. Uh, well, one of the first questions is um, how do you uh, how do you tune each head differently? Well, um, because some people like the bottom head a little higher, or maybe eat like the same pitch as the drum. I don't hear too many people saying they like the bottom head lower, but there's a remedy for that too. Um, so basically, what happens is, and maybe I can. Uh, show you a little bit here. Um, like when you have this drum, when you have two, when you have two things that are the subject to uh, uh, to tensioning, the thing is the thickness of the of whatever surface is being tightened is is uh super important so uh i have a coded single play up here which sounds but the bottom snare side head is obviously thicker hear how that hear how that works now when i tune this up the top head the bottom head so they uh, so both heads 
uh, they raise pitch or lower pitch parallel, but not equal because or not the same pitch because each head thickness is different, right? So it's really, really pretty ingenious. And, and because of that, I feel like the drums have such a, a, a pure, like a pureness to the tone and uh, there we go. They have a pureness to the tone and, uh, and the tuning range is broader because what happens is with drums is that when you deal with that many screws, uh, or that many tension rods, you know, some of them are going to like have different temperaments than other ones. Have you guys encountered this? I, I certainly have. You know what? I have one very expensive, very high end snare drum. And uh, I was saying this on my other video. Uh, the one of the tension rods on the bottom, it's I mean, even if it was a brand new drum. It would just fall out, you know. So then I have to then you have to put those little plastic uh uh what are they called uh, i think the brands tuner fish lugs which do their job but you know but then you want to change the tuning of the head you got to take all those things off and next time you put them on they're not as usable and uh so it, it's kind of a mess so but this takes out all of that so um so yeah so let's say you want the bottom head a little higher than the top than the batter side. Um, so this means that um, this is the normal thing I think that most people want. The sound that most people want. So if you have a two ply head and uh, that's clear and a single ply head that's also clear the single ply clear head is going to have a higher fundamental pitch than the, than the head with two plies, right? So, so therefore when they have equal tension, uh, the, uh, the two ply head uh, is, is going to be a lower pitch than the bottom head. So therefore that was a really complicated way of saying two ply heads are thicker, single ply heads are thinner, Tune them the same, bottom head is higher pitch. If you want the same pitch, you just put head on same head on both sides. And if you want the head tune bot the, the bottom head to be lower, you just put the thicker head on the bottom and whatever. Uh, and then the thinner head on top. I mean, you can experiment, but you know, uh, that's the cool thing. And what this also means is uh, I can I can actually demonstrate this. So uh, for me as a drummer, I, uh, you know, for a long time, I just used one kit for everything, which was fine. But one of the things that was annoying was like, let's say I have my, I, I have a jazz tuning and then I found the sweet spot. I found like it was, it sounded so good. Everything was perfect. But then I would have like some sort of pop gig or something and I had to completely detune the drums again. Right. Uh, so I, I lose that. So then the next time after that, I tune up for, for jazz, it's it's not the same. Um, anyway, uh, sorry, I got to fix this latency here. So I'll take you on a little little journey here where I will. Um, let's see. Okay, let's try. It. Oh, that's but that's much better. Sorry, I had a latency issue. All right, so let me start with the jazz tuning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the jazz tuning, and then uh, then I'm going to act like I'm going to go pop gig, tune them down again. Then I'm going to tune it back up to the original jazz tuning to show you how easy it is. Okay.
for the record, I usually only take a four piece jazz kit to a, a gig, uh, but I'll just tune these, uh, uh, you know, uh, these three toms and snare drum for the time being. And, you know, I would change out the bass drum. But anyway, so this is what we got, but let's start here. Did y'all see what I did there? So, um, so I took it from, you know, uh, my jazz tuning and I took it way down to play some more groovy stuff. And I took it back up to do jazz tuning again. And it was really no problem. And, uh, it's, it's really, really, you know, kind of mind blowing actually. So, uh, that's why I think that, I mean, these drums are the exceptional, like just super top of the line uh, shells and construction and everything. And these drums are just, you know, I, I mean, I own, um, I own, uh, I own some really other brands like high end kits that I've acquired over the years. And I, you know, whenever I have this thing in my studio, I just don't miss them at all. As a matter of fact, when I play tension rod drums, because sometimes, you know, whenever there are gigs, you kind of have to, uh, I kind of find it kind of cumbersome, really, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's so much easier to do it this way. And I feel like the tone is so pure this way, too. Um, and 
you know, you can really, it's, it's a lot easier to fine tune. It's less frustrating, less hassle, you know, and uh, it, it's so good. And I mean, so I really highly recommend these drums. Now we have the new Epiphany series drums, which are the more affordable, but still super high quality drums. And man, that's like, that might be the, the, the most work dr working drummer friendly kit on the market. I really think it is. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Cause you know, like on a gig being able to tune like that, unreal, just unreal. So, um, so yeah, any other questions, you know, while I'm on here, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on another 10 minutes or so. Um, and, And oh, and uh, some other things that people ask about are uh, the cable. Like how 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 strong is the cable? Well, the cable is so strong that the head will break far long before the cable does. And uh, and uh, the good people at Welch Tuning Systems recommend that you change the cable every six months. But uh, I've had this kit in my uh in my studio over a year i haven't done that um it's nowhere near breaking and it holds the tune tuning super super well um i've also you know heard other testimonials and uh sam over at welch also told me like they've never ever ever had a cable break ever and if the cable breaks it's likely due to negligence and uh, kind of abuse of the system. But if you're using it normally and just using it like I'm using it here, man, I don't think, you know, unless, you know, you leave it on there for a few years or something, uh, it'll, I don't think it'll break. So, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, so that's, it's just super cool. I mean, this is just super cool. It's such a unique thing uh, in, in a sea of, of uh, redundancy as far as like, you know, like instead of, you know, people have like new finishes and new hardware and new things like that, all fine and dandy. But this is something that's really, um, you know, just incredible and, and something that's truly innovative, you know? Um, and I mean, it works. That's all I can say is it works. And this is only the beginning. There's so many other innovations that that uh, can be piggybacked off of this because of this system. I mean, I know Sam has uh, in his brain, he's got all sorts of other things planned and worked out for the future uh, with this. But this is just the beginning and everything else will just be, you know, I'm sure. I mean, just enhance art with what's already there. So um so yeah, and I mean, at least I think it would be, it's really great if, uh, you know, like my signature snare, I'll show it to you again in all of its glory. Ooh. The design just looks good too, man. Um, uh, it's, you know, if you have a snare like this, I was going to set up a second snare, but it turns out my second snare drum stand broke. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was going to show you that, but uh, but basically you can have, like if you just have, if you have your regular kit and, you know, I mean, your kit works fine and whatever, but you add like a WTS, like my signature snare drum be a perfect example as your side snare. I mean, you you know, that thing can do everything. And I mean, tune it up real quick, tune it down real quick, you know, and of course as a main snare. I mean, this, this snare right here, I've been playing with this thing for a while and uh, it works really well. So, um, so maybe what I'll do now is I'll go through some tunings, kind of play around a little bit and uh, just kind of show you the, the, the range of these drums. Okay. All right, let's do that.
All right, guys. So this is, I mean, the head is just hanging on for dear life. Like it's, uh, I tuned it just basically, you know, the lowest, as low as it can go while still having some sort of fundamental pitch. Um, oh, and yeah, I'll mention that the signature snare drum, uh, this beauty, it's uh, 13 by 7.5 and 1.2 millimeter brass shell with die cast hoops available for pre-order now. Uh, also the Epiphany series and all that. You can go to www.wtsdrums.com uh, uh, forward slash uh, shop. But okay, so anyway, so I tuned it dead low. I mean, just barely enough to have a fundamental pitch and let's let's play around with that. So now I'm going to take it up. Let's, let's get really incremental with this. You know, uh, I'm going to tune up a little bit more just to see what kind of vibe we can get from that.
All right. So that's about, you know, kind of a mid, I end up at a mid high tuning. Um, oh, we got a couple of questions or I got a question here. Uh, how fast is it to change the heads is my question. Luke, what's up, man? Uh, that's actually a very good question. So I like to say that if you if you want if you're going all in on these drums, it's a tiny bit of a lifestyle change. Um, so it'll take you. I mean, for me, it took like the first time I changed heads on the kit. Uh, by the third tom, oh, maybe it was the second tom. By the time I did the second tom, uh, I I kind of understood it. So the question to your or the answer to your question is. Uh, you might have to do it once to kind of figure it out because it's a new thing. But after that, it's really easy. Um, and I would argue that, you know, if you get it fast enough that you can change it uh, uh, as fast. You know, I mean, you can change it as, just as fast as a drum key and a, uh, uh, on a tension rod drum. So I, it's really not bad at all, honestly. And, um, I mean, I changed, by the way, I don't know what it is, maybe because the head is, uh, so even on the drums because of the tension, um, uh, like I kind of found that the head's durability might be higher. I mean, I might be wrong. I'm no, I'm no scientist or anything, but it's just different. There's something different here and I really like it. So, um, so yeah, to answer to your question is do it once to get a feel for what to do. And then after that, the more you do it, you'll get faster. And at a certain point, uh, or I think soon after that, you can do it real quick, no problem. I think it's the, it's a similar process, you know, whenever you're changing heads on, oh, really when you do anything. Like if, if, if you're learning how to change strings on a guitar for the first time, or if you're uh, learning how to actually change heads on a tension rod for the first time. You know, you got to do it a, a couple of times to get the feel for it. I mean, it's no different here. And the payoff is really big. Um, but I, I do think that that's probably uh, one of the most important questions and valid questions. But as a professional musician, as someone who's had these drums for a year, uh, in my studio, uh, I can tell you that it's really no problem. And yeah, good people at Welch. Yeah, generally around three to four minutes to change heads and get back in two. Uh, what up, Josh? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, anyway, these... So I got these drums right now. It's about a medium, uh, medium high tuning uh, to where, you know, we're about to get into the, the jazz, uh, uh, jazz stratosphere, which actually when I played the drums, the first thing that I did, like when I first tried them is, and maybe this isn't justified, but the instant sound to sit at the drums, I, I think, how do they sound tuned high? Because, you know, I do, I'm a jazz drummer at heart. That's the first thing that I do. And I sat down, I tuned these up. I was like, I was pretty blown away because they sound really amazing. Uh, Luke, yeah. I mean, studio or live. I mean, these drums and this system, I, if you had some Welsh drums, like as a, as a backline kit, you know, for, uh, for a club, I know that, uh, uh, let's see. I, I know that there are I, maybe a couple of clubs or maybe there's some clubs around that actually have these drums, uh, as their backline kit and people have really loved it. But think about that. If you have a club and you got a set of drums, uh, you got a set of set, you got a set of drums up and, uh, and you know, 
it's this easy to tune, it saves time on setup and tear down, uh, it saves the sound guy a headache of changing in and out drums. I mean, there's just so many benefits to it. So, Imhotep, what's up, man? Uh, let's see, Daniel Garcia, hi. When do you change your heads? Let's say an hour a day of usage. Is changing stock head makes a difference? Uh, oh, that's right, Sam. The five spot. Yeah. Um, yeah, Daniel, I, I, I did address this uh, earlier. Um, but, yeah, happy to reiterate that. Uh, if you have a thinner head on the bottom, which is the case most of the time, uh, you're going to get a higher pitch than the batter head. And if you want the same pitch on both sides, and you, you just put the same head uh, on both sides. So that's how you do that. And, I mean, I'm – you know what? When I was a kid and all I was I'm such a stickler for tuning. Like I practiced it. I uh, you know, I kind of got a feel for it. I like, you know, was reading all the articles about it. Um and I was stretching the head. I did everything. And uh and eventually it got to the point, you know, when you do it enough, or I can just do it when I've been thinking about it. Um but so that being said, and that being very, very particular about tuning, I have no issues with these. None. I don't, I don't, I never once think, man, I wish they did this. Never. I mean, totally suits everything. And I've posted a lot of videos on my Instagram page and my YouTube page, and you'll see a bunch of, uh, uh, you'll see a bunch of different uh, videos of me playing different styles of music. And these drums just really, uh, man, they really just are more than up to snuff. Um, yeah. And mind you, when I got these drums, they had coded UV ones on top of it. Uh, and by the way, side note, I don't know if you guys, anybody knows this, but for Evans, I'm the guy who actually named it the UV one. Not that that matters. Just fun little sign side note. Uh, Chris Beals saying, Oh, Daniel, you're welcome, man. F feel free to ask any questions. Okay. Daniel said, or uh, Chris says, yes, five spot. Although unfortunately I haven't had the chance to perform there this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Uh, and yeah, they are incredible. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm excited every time I play these drums, you know. Um, Imhotep. Uh, let's see. I'm still having trouble uh, with my kick resonant head. Still do bouncy. Do you use Emas? Actually, no. Uh on these drums, I have an EQ EQ4 on both sides. Um, I try to keep my drums as open and as uh, vibrant as possible. You know, I mean, if I have to like dampen them or do some things for uh, for a gig or for a session, then I mean, I'll do that. But you know, at its core, I uh, I want them to. Uh, uh, to speak clearly at, you know, like in very pure tone to begin with. Um, let's see. All right, Daniel. So you use the Evans heavyweights. I, yeah, I've tried the heavyweight on the kick before. That's cool. Um, and then summer. Yeah. I was the same way. I was the same way. Like I just, uh, I didn't know what to expect. You know, like, like I think passively, I kind of thought, ah, these are a little gimmicky. But then I went to the booth and I put them through the, the ringer a little bit and I fell in love. So, uh, all right. So uh, any, any last questions? You know what? I think the last thing I'm going to do, as fantastic as this drums again, 
Uh, you know, I gotta put up this signature snare. Come on, guys. Okay. So, oh, Daniel. Uh, well, let's see. I'll give it a shot. Thanks. Yeah, EQ4 is, uh, is a great head. Um, Daniel, this is a uh, brass snare drum. This is my signature snare drum for those of you who are just tuning in. Um, Let's see. <laughs> uh, and this is a 13, let's see. This is a 13 by seven and a half, uh, 1.2 millimeter um, uh, brass shell snare drum. Just fantastic. Uh, you know, I've been, I've had some time to, uh, to mess with it a bit and all that and just been absolutely blown away. There's just something, you know, like there's something about uh, brass shells. I just, I just love. Um, yeah, man, uh, we did everything cool. Uh, we did everything possible to, uh, to not only make a very high quality, high performing, uh, snare drum but something that was more affordable than what we currently offered um so and i think that really did the trick so uh let's see well where are we at here all right so i'll i guess i'll play us out here I don't know what it is. I'm having a horrible time with latency today. All right. That's better. Okay. Thank you, guys. This was definitely a unique uh, experience. I'll be back on Friday, same time, uh, if you can think of any questions or and all that. Um, and, uh, you know, this has just been really cool and I've been really excited to work with Sam and the team and Hey, thank, Hey, Sam and Welch tuning system drums. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you always guys. Go check out the website, look them up, go on Instagram. You can look them up. You can look me up, uh, all that stuff. Everything's out there. Pretty easy to find. Um, yeah. So I guess I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna freely improvise.